Hello, welcome to the Spot Robotics Podcast. Today I'm joined with my guest, Mr. Jay Kalodner, in discussing cloud and software engineering. I hope you enjoy this podcast where you can gain insight into technology in the modern world and gain a new perspective and advice on succeeding in these fields. If you enjoy the podcast, follow us on wherever you get your podcast. And if you'd like to support us more, give us a review. Thank you. So, so for my first question, I want to ask basically, what does your day-to-day routine look like being a cloud support engineer for Amazon Web Services? Yeah, so being a cloud support engineer for Amazon Web Services, I work with Amazon's enterprise clients on their cloud architecture, and I help them resolve problems that they've been having or help them explore new avenues towards their business solutions. So most of my day, what I do is I'm on the phone with enterprise clients of AWS, like banks or airlines. I've been working with NASA and the New York Stock Exchange recently for some examples. And what I do is I help them address any problems they're having or any concerns and help them make decisions about their architecture moving forward. Pretty cool. Um, my next question was, who, who, are, um, who are a few influential people in your life and how they impact you, impacted you in your career? Yeah, so in my career, I would say the person who influenced me the most would be one of my professors from college, who is a professor named Subhas Dessa at the University of California, Santa Cruz. And he was one of my capstone professors. And for his classes, he actually taught a structured problem solving method, literally a structured way to approach work of any kind. And he taught us all how to define problems that we're facing, plan how we're going to address those problems and then actually execute that plan, learn from it, and then see what we can do moving forward, maybe address a new problem or something like that. So he was definitely the person who gave me the biggest influence towards the way I work today. He taught me a lot about um, technology and just how to approach complicated and high level problems in a way that makes them more digestible. A couple more people that have helped me out a lot would be my brother who formerly worked for Amazon Web Services and now he's over at Walmart helping out with their marketing team. And another person would be, let's see. Um, the last person I would say would probably be my programming professor from high school. He's the one who got me into technology in the first place and I wouldn't be where I am today without him. Really, really cool. Um, uh, so I was basically asked by, uh, about your experience at Shiphawk. Um, uh, yeah. What did you learn while you were there? And for the people who don't know, could you explain what Shiphawk does? Yeah, of course. So Shiphawk is what we call a transportation management software. So it's something that businesses use to handle their fulfillment on a day-to-day basis in their warehouse. So for example, if you're selling products online on Shopify or something like that, even on your own website, you need to have some way of deciding how you're going to pack your orders, the optimal box to put it in, the best shipping method to send it with to save money. I'm sure everyone out there has received packages in the mail where they get a giant box and they get a little thing inside surrounded by a ton of bubble wrap. And what the software does is it helps companies avoid making mistakes like that because it leads to more expensive shipping. So this type of software just helps you automate that entire process, get your orders into one central platform and ship them out very easily using the best price possible. Um, In terms of what I learned there, It was a very fun company to work at. Working at a small business or a startup like that, you get a lot of flexibility to work on projects and to get involved with people from all over the organization. So at Shiphawk, I started out as a solutions engineer, which meant I was working with customers every day to help them implement the software and get used to using it so that it could help them out in their business. And that got me into the field of customer relationship management and just generally talking to people every day. And it showed me that working with people and being on the phone for work really isn't that bad. You actually get to meet a lot of cool people and learn from them. Um, And the biggest thing I definitely learned while there is I started to get into development more. Being at a software company, even not being in a development role, you get to start getting introduced to some concepts and even in some cases, if you take the initiative, writing some code on your own and making some pretty cool things. So it was definitely a gateway for me into more technology and helped me a lot with getting towards AWS. Um, so for my, that's really cool. My next question was, what is one piece of advice you'd give to someone starting out in a career similar to yours? In a career similar to mine? Well, the best piece of advice I could give to anyone is, like I said before, have initiative. What helped me out a lot when I was starting out my career and also when I was working on things in college and internships and stuff like that 
is I didn't just settle for what I was supposed to do. When I was doing internships in college, I was doing quality assurance for an even smaller software company. And instead of just doing a ton of manual labor, I learned how to automate my job, which made me a better programmer. And then when I moved on to Shiphawk, the same thing happened. I was working with customers on their implementations. Instead of just finding pain points where we can make the software better, I was actually able to go ahead and make those improvements myself. So taking initiative and taking advantage of every opportunity that comes your way is definitely really important. And if you see something that looks fun, you see something and you're like, I want to know how that works. It would be really cool to play around with that a little bit. Take your shot go for it. Dig deep and get as far as you can and just learn a lot from every experience. Take away as much as you can. Yeah, I know you talked about uh, um, that small company. I want to basically ask, um, since you did like you did two terms with uh, that company in college, yeah, I want I to ask you, what, what really made you want to like go with them compared to other companies for your second year? Yeah, so finding an internship with the right type of people in the right place was very hard. And for me, I was able to leverage some connections that I had in order to get in touch with people at that internship. And what that led me to doing both times, the reason why I really went back was because they gave me that freedom the first time I came in. They let me look at what I was doing and say, hey, I think I can make this better, not just for me, but for the entire company. And they let me try my hand at a project that was really cool. And I came back for a second year and did the same thing again. I made another tool that help speed things along and help them out a little bit on their side. And I got to learn more about programming and how technology works. Oh, uh, really cool. Uh, and you talked about how you, could you explain a little bit more how you got that, like how you get like an internship in college, like some advice on how to do it. I know you talked about leveraging connections, but like, you know how you could make connections to basically help you get a job like that? Yeah, in terms of making connections, the easiest way is to talk to people. You'd be surprised that if you just talk to your friends or your family, the people that you know in your everyday life, everyone knows someone or is related to someone or knows someone that knows someone. It's really surprisingly easy to find people that might know somebody. And there were a lot of connections I explored. I went through some of my friends and there were some dead ends, but eventually I was able to find something that worked out for me and worked out for them. So the best piece of advice I would give would be explore all your options. Talk to as many people as you can. Everybody knows someone in tech at this point. So I'm sure that it'll be possible for other people to go ahead and talk to their circle and find people around them that they could help or that could help them get into what they want to do. In terms of other options, there's other platforms like LinkedIn where we found each other. And those also give really good opportunities to people to get connected and figure out what they want to do in the future. Interesting. Um... I want to basically ask, uh, what, in your opinion, what is the most important personality trait um, someone should have to be successful in like the tech industry or in particular your job in general? Like one of those skills that you really, that you should have? Yeah, the strongest skill or the most important skill that I would say is important in a technological role is the ability to learn. Technology is changing every day. If we look at the way technology was 20 years ago versus the way it is now. It's a night and day difference. If we look at everything from the strength of processors to the quality of learning language models, technology is always moving forward and it keeps moving faster and faster. So the people who get left behind, the people who don't pick up new technology or don't learn new skills, those are the people who are going to have a harder time working in tech. So the biggest recommendation I could have for you is stay aware of the ecosystem, keep learning as much as you can. And if you see something and you don't understand it, read a little bit about it. Take five minutes out of your day to make yourself a better, smarter engineer, and you'll reap the benefits of it. Do you got any like other, I guess, like skills that are important, not maybe as important as that, but like any other skills, like soft skills that you really see are like coming up in in like the tech industry a lot? Coming up in the tech industry, what I would say would be an important one is going to be cloud architecture coming up. Being at AWS, I see businesses every day trying to move more and more of their operations into the cloud, and they're trying to find ways to optimize their business. There are tons of cloud products out there right now, and finding the way to run your application that's really the best way, the most cost-efficient way, and the best way for your users is really complicated. And what I would, so what I would recommend to people knowing that is start learning cloud architecture. See how you're going to build your app, not just in the sense of what code it's going to run on, but what kind of server do you want? Do you even want a server? There's so many options you can do at this point that are so low cost that 
learning more about how it works would help out anyone that's trying to get into this industry. Um, I had a I had a side question. Um, so I want to basically, since you talked, you mentioned about um soft skills. I want to have I want to ask if you had any advice for like soft skills, like talking to people, um, talking to people, being able to present, like any advice on how to build those skills in general. In terms of talking to people, um, I would say just be open with conversation. When I started out in my first role, I had never worked in a customer facing job before. And it took me a while to get used to talking to people. Now it's something that I do for hours every day. And most people my age don't like hopping on the phone. I personally even hate hopping on the phone when I'm outside of work. But you get used to talking to new people after a while. One thing I would say is just don't be afraid of it. Trust yourself and trust your knowledge. The biggest thing that people feel anxious about when they're talking to people, especially in tech, is knowing what they're talking about. And if you're confident in yourself, you're confident in your skills, then you'll find it's really easy to talk to people and make good connections with them. My my next question was, how did um what is the most like what's the most important lesson you've learned over your career that really like I guess really like has impacted your career like in a big way like any lesson that really stood out to you? Yeah, so. I would say one lesson that stuck out to me, and this is one of AWS's leadership principles actually, is to disagree and commit and to have backbone. It's hard when you're breaking into this industry, especially as a young person who is trying to establish themselves and their reputation to really take a stance on something that you feel strongly about, whether it be how your job is doing something or how a particular thing was handled, even if it comes to your salary with the job that you're working with. Being able to advocate for yourself is extremely important and being able to support what you need. Well, I had a, and, a question. You said, you said yeah. like, as like, you said as a young person, I want to ask like, what are some challenges that you face as a, I guess like a young person that coming into the industry just like recently graduated? Like, what are some challenges that you faced and how did you overcome overcome? Yeah. So when I was coming into the industry, I was in a position when I graduated college that I wanted to get a job right away. And just like everybody else working in tech, it's really, it was really, really hard for me to find a job. I was sending out dozens of applications every day, talking to as many companies as I could, trying to get as many interviews as I could. And in terms of breaking through barriers, you have to keep trying. I see a lot of people get discouraged when they look at the job market or trying to get into this industry. And you have to keep trying. I talked to hundreds of places before I ended up landing two final interviews that led me to Shiphawk, and that's how I ended up here. Um, the other barriers would be education. I remember when I was in high school, there was a point where I was going to run out of programming classes to take. Same thing in college. And I was able to work with my professors, both in high school and college, to learn some more, build a curriculum for myself. We call those independent studies. And... Um, those really helped me out on the educational side and then getting into the industry wise, just trying as hard as you can, exploring as many avenues as you can. You mentioned about um, college. I want to basically ask like, uh, what, what did you basically learn from your college experience at the University of California, Santa Cruz? Like anything you learned like in general from like a class, like, or in general that really, I guess like helped you in a really big way. Yeah, I would say the thing that helped me the most, like I mentioned earlier, was the problem solving method that one of my professors taught me about. That changed the way that I do work from the bottom up and really helped me become a better engineer because of it. Outside of that, another thing that college taught me is that I didn't want to be a programmer. Um, I loved being a computer science student growing up and I loved writing code, but I eventually realized that being a professional programmer and writing code every hour of the day was not something I wanted to do, which is what led me to AWS, where I write code sometimes, but I also work on a ton of different other aspects of technology, like networking and databases and cloud architecture. And it's really fun. So one thing that happens in college, especially if you're in a field of study, you'll learn if you like it or not, and you'll learn what parts about it you like. And that was one of the biggest things that helped me out at Santa Cruz, because otherwise I would be a programmer right now, and I wouldn't be as happy. I want to, I want to ask... Um... What made you decide not to be a, like a full-on programmer and kind of, I guess, like, 
be a part programmer and more in like in the cloud space with different in like different types of technologies. Yeah, it was really just doing it more in a educational setting or in a professional setting. When you're being when you're so worried about the tiny efficiencies and making everything work perfectly in your code, when you're concerned about algorithms and memory usage, getting to that deep of a granularity for programming didn't strike a chord with me. I didn't have the same interest as I had before. And um, I changed my course of study in school from programming to what we call technology and information management, which is the business side of running a technology company. And that includes things like product development or supply chain management, um, networking, database administration, like I talked about a little bit before. Uh, there's a ton of aspects of tech and running a tech company just outside of programming and getting to take classes like that uh, encouraged me that, hey, there's more I could do. And I found it. Uh, I want to basically ask, um, I guess, what made you really go into tech in the first place? Um, like, what made you go, like, I guess, into the tech, into the direction of technology over other fields? Um, well, since I was a little kid, I've loved computers. I think... Um, that's something you'll hear from everyone is they played video games when they were a kid or they had access to the computer when they were a kid and they got a little bit too interested in it, just like I did. And um, I found myself on the computer more and more every day. I found myself playing games, talking to my friends, doing all of that online. And the internet became like a second nature, just like how it is for a lot of young people today. So for me, it was just from a young age being on the computer. I was fascinated with it. I was fascinated with how it worked and I wanted to learn more. And that led me to where I am today. Uh, I want to ask, what is a common myth about your job? Basically, about your job or your field of expertise, something that most people assume that is true, but it isn't really true. Well, the thing I would say that's definitely the most common assumption that at least I feel is not true is a lot of people don't like, uh, they think being in customer support sucks. And to be honest, sometimes it does. Sometimes working in customer facing roles is hard and you have to have tough conversations or say th or talk about things you don't want to talk about. And sometimes you get caught making a mistake and it doesn't feel good. But a lot of the times you get to talk to some really cool people who are smart and knowledgeable and can teach you new things. And you can see the amazing ways that they're doing the things that they're doing. When I was working at Shiphawk, one of the coolest experiences I had was working with a company called Hollywood which makes furniture that's weatherproof out of this plastic material that has a wooden texture. It's really cool um, that it doesn't like fly away in hurricanes or things like that because it's so dense and heavy, but it feels just like wood. And working with those people on their shipping needs was really, really cool. That was not an experience I would have had otherwise if I didn't get into some customer management. And I got to go and fly out to their warehouse, see all of their operations, and that was an amazing experience. And I made friends out of it. So I would say uh, being in customer support is cool. You get to help people solve problems, you get to learn about how things can go wrong, and you get to be the one that makes it go right. And that feels really good. That's really cool. Um, my next question was, where do you see yourself in like five to 10 years? Like, where do you see yourself, you, where you want to be in whatever job or field or whatever you want to, like, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Like, what do you want to improve in? Yeah, my goal right now, I know I talked about this earlier in the call, but cloud architecture is a skill that is going to be growing in value so, so much over the course of the next few years. And my next goal moving from the cloud support engineering that I'm in right now in AWS is actually to move into a solutions architecture role in AWS as well. My, I would say my goal for the next five years would be to be working with enterprise clients like JP Morgan or NASA and helping them set up their cloud computing needs, help them make the decisions on what's best for their architecture, for both their applications, for what they're providing to their customers, and for what they're doing internally. I think that would be awesome. In terms of 10 years, I would want to be hopefully managing people that are doing stuff like that or something even cooler, but we're not quite there yet. That's, that's cool. Wish you the best, though. Well, I think like you're really like knowledgeable, so I think that that wouldn't be a problem. Um, my, one of my like, final questions was, how do you see, like you said, you talked about the clouds, but do you see anything in the cloud space really changing up? Like, I guess, like anything that's really like in the direction where it's going, like any new upcoming technologies that are really playing a big role in your, in your life? 
Well, well, there are obviously some things that I can't talk about because mm-hmm. my Amazon NDA. Yeah. But one of the funnest things that I get to work with on an everyday basis at Amazon is a service that we call AWS Lambda. Uh-huh. Um, this service is what we call serverless computing. For most people, when you think of an app or something running on the internet, you think of a server that is a giant computer that's housed somewhere in the world that's running this website or the app or whatever. What Lambda is, is it's actually, there's no server involved. If you click a button or something like that, the server turns on long enough to deal with whatever you did, and then it turns back off. I can scale that up or down to as many users as you have, up to hundreds or thousands, and it can handle so much traffic. So it's really beautiful how cloud technologies like that are being designed to grow and shrink and move like fluidly, the same way that human traffic does and the same way that we interact with the internet. And more cloud technologies like that are gonna be coming out in the future that really exemplify how much we can do with modern technology. Does this AI play, I want to ask, does uh, artificial intelligence like play a, a role in what you, what you do? Um, it is going too soon, but not just yet. The reason being with learning language models, I'm sure you've heard this, but mm-hmm. they're really good at putting statements together that sound like they're supposed to go together, but mm-hmm. it doesn't always work. So AI is moving towards the uh, direction where it can do things like design cloud architecture for us or generate code snippets that create resources for us. But it's not at the point where it can answer complicated questions or fix really weird problems. So I think that one day maybe artificial intelligence will be able to do that if it's trained well enough and it can understand the nuances of a cloud situation well enough. But today, uh, it could be doing more. That's, uh, my final question was, uh, when you look back at your journey as in your career, uh, what are some defining moments that you felt like that was really important? And what are some things that you regret upon and see that you could have changed a bit? Yeah, so I would say that my favorite moments, the moments where I felt like I made it, were when I got my first job when I was graduating college with Shiphawk, and then following that once I got the offer from AWS. I wasn't even looking for jobs when I ended up talking to Amazon. They reached out to me and I interviewed with them on a whim. I wasn't expecting to get the offer that I did and it ended up changing my life. In terms of the decisions that I wish I would have changed, I I think I would have done better in a different first role or with more agency in my first role. It's hard to explain, but I feel like I could have done better there. But that's what happens to everyone when they're in their first real position like that out of college. You make mistakes, you learn things every day. And there were a lot of things that I wish I could have done differently. There were times where I would make a mistake one day and realize it the next day. And then I would have to go talk to a customer and explain that I had made that mistake. Mm -hmm. And it sucked, but it taught me a lot. And I wouldn't be the engineer that I am at Amazon now today without it. Absolutely. Um... My next question was, I want to basically ask, um, how, do, how do you want to, uh, I guess, remember, be remembered as whatever, whoever you are? Like, how do you want to be remembered in my, it's like in Amazon or, where, or wherever you basically are? Like, how do you want to be remembered in a, as in a professional sense? In a professional sense? Um... I think what I would want to be is someone that you can work with, someone that you can rely on and you don't feel bad reaching out to that person to talk to them. I find it to be in my first job and even now when I'm working at Amazon, I find that when I reach out to certain people, their time or their self-perceived value of their time is worth more than responding. And I would rather be known as the person who's always willing to take some time and help out and make your day better than be someone who thinks their time is worth more than that. So what I would want to be remembered as is the guy who's there for you. Last question. I want to basically ask, um, how can you get, I know since you went through a few internships, how can you get the, guess, the best experience out of your internship, learn the most, build them up, the amount of connections that you do, and also like in the job space, like currently, how do you like, as actively like, get the best experience from, from that specific job or position? Yeah, this one is one that I have... I had a lot of fun with in all of the positions that I've had so far. If you go to any internship or job, they're going to give you your responsibilities and they're going to tell you what the expectations are, what you're supposed to do. 
And if you just do those things, then you're going to do fine. You're going to get paid and it's going to work out. If you want to take full advantage of it and really benefit from the situation, you should look at what you're doing and learn more about it. Understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. Ask questions about it. Try and see if you can make what you're doing better or see if there's ways you could do it faster. There's like for my job, I'm expected to help our, our customers resolve a certain number of problems every week. And I could either just resolve that number of problems every single time like clockwork, or I could spend more time and talk to more people and solve more problems. And through that, learn more about those things and learn how to fix things that I see like that in the future. And that makes you a better engineer for it. So take the time to dive deep into whatever you're doing and go above and beyond. Really care about what you do and drive to make it better. I want to always thank you for taking your time to be part of my podcast and it was really informative and I want to really thank you again. Of course. Thank you. It was my pleasure. I really. That's it for today's podcast. Again, if you enjoyed this episode, follow us on wherever you get your podcasts. And if you'd like to support us even more, rate us. Until then, we look forward to seeing you in a future podcast very, very soon.